Hello folks, uh, this is Mark. Um, I'm just going to show you the process in DAZ first to get the scene I rendered for the Red Crow Inn. Um, this is a camera angle which I, I used one of the suggested camera angles and moved it very slightly just to position a wee bit better for the scene I wanted. Um, you can see I'll turn on the uh, headlamp. <laughs> Let me see, camera 19, headlamp, on. So the scene composition, um, there are one, two, three, four, five, six characters, effectively the dog's another character, plus the billboard of the, the young lady. Um, to render all this in one go, uh, <laughs> it's going to kick you to CPU. Um, so you're best rendering at most three figures at a time. Um, uh, it just works better for iRay. I don't really. I, mean, I don't know quite what it is with iRay. It's just the limitations of the package. So, um, start off. Um, I created a duplicate camera so that I can go into the scene and check uh, anything that needs to be checked out, like foot contact, uh, for example. Um, so that you don't render something and see a uh, foot like uh, slightly out of position or whatever so if you take um i'll take the foot contact here and it's camera two so you can zoom in and check uh see the foot positioning make sure it's on the ground or not too far into the ground or whatever um for the rest of the scene with complex scenes it's best to actually um maneuver the scene around and check any aspects of the scene that do with being uh, set to invisible. Um, the only thing you need to do is when you do this is to check and make sure the outside environmental map does not interfere with the lighting you want in the scene. You can go to iRay Preview to see what uh, effect taking out walls and such has on the lighting. In this case it's minimal because the environmental intensity is set so low it doesn't make a difference. Um, so uh, this is a scene, I'll just go back to the rough camera position. For this, to stop it from going to CPU, you will need to render um, the scene in groups of maybe three characters at the most. Uh, it's just the way the IRA works uh, with the limitations of the render engine. Um, so to allow you to group each character and take off the visibility without uh, having to pick each bit of clothing and take it off. Just simply set each character into a group on its own and you can take off the visibility in one go. So I'll take off the barmaid, um, leave the doggo and the minstrel in, the swordsman at the back and his father, or well that's where, or who I think he is anyway, um, take them out. Oops, he's not grouped. Tut, tut, tut. Uh, father. He's grouped now, so you just take off the visibility of him. Um, so, oh, I've moved the camera, haven't I? No, I've not, good. Um, go back to your camera. The scene is more or less ready for um, the first pass. I'll just put in the barmaid as well. I think I did that first time around and take out the peasant. So because there's bloom uh, in the actual render settings, the bloom filter is on. Uh, it won't allow you to spot render. You need to render everything, um, the whole scene and then mask off and re-render the characters you want to put in, in addition. Uh, it's just one of the vagaries of uh, IRA Engine again. Um, so you've got your three characters here. I would render that. <laughs> this took a long time. I didn't realise because of the dog's fur and the fur cape of the minstrel. It took uh, 2.1 gigabytes of texture, memory and geometry or something like that. Although I've got a good machine and a good card, I just left it overnight and I got to about um, 500 iterations before I just cancelled it out and used that image for the base image. So 
these images done, or these characters done, I would uh, take out Collapse All. I would take out the Doggo and the Barmaid and the Minstrel, the Swordsman, the Father, and the Peasant back in because no actual shadows from the other figures will overlap them to make it look unrealistic. Um, you have to be aware of shadows from any figures you take out and how they would interact with the scene. So these characters are pretty much out of the way. That would be the second pass of the render uh, for overlaying and masking in Photoshop. Um, that's about it for DAZ, I think. Uh, I'll just uh, move over to Photoshop. Hi again folks, uh, so we're back into Photoshop this time and I'll show you the process, um, it's actually quite a short process in combining the two renders done to get all the figures in and a wee bit of um, post-processing. Um, I use the Nick collection for uh, post-processing, it's not free, there was a free version but it was it's very hard to track down these days. And I'm not sure if um, Google would like me sharing it, so I, I, I've i got the free version, um, I could maybe upload it and share it, but uh, I'm not sure what Google's policy on that is at the moment. The purchase version you can get um, at sale times. I think it was over Christmas I bought it and it was about um, £90, but it does, it's a nice plugin that's a nice plugin um it lets you do a lot of fil filtering and uh, work with images that's very nice so originally i rendered with uh the two billboards one i took out which was the figure at the back because it did look a bit flat the figure of the girl was okay the figure of the <laughs> leering old man uh, just looks very flat to me. So I rendered the barmaid, the dog and the minstrel and that took quite a while as I said just before. Um, so it's not bad, It's the quality is excellent anyway. So I've got, a, I, I rendered to 8k, I know this might come as a bit of a shock but uh, uh, it just seems better for any potential future uh, use of the image in an advert or whatever um, quality uh, image that needs a high resolution so um, the only thing that didn't quite come through nicely with the render was the bottom of the tunic here so all I did was uh, was a slight bit of photoshopping to um, put in the base of the tunic so the First uh, layer is okay. Uh, I think everything's off, yeah. Um, so the second rendered layer goes in. Now I'll take off the mask. Uh, disable. You can see the figures that um, IRA Engine will render reasonably well and reasonably quickly are here. Um, all that needs to be done is a mask added over the top to allow the previous layer image to show through. Um, quite self-explanatory really, I mean it's just about compos compositing images properly and uh, it generally doesn't take too long, it's just the render times can be a bit of a pain. Next I have, a, I bought a paint art action from Invato ages ago, it must have been about four years ago, which is quite a while in my terms. Um, it uh, this is the, the paint art action full of opacity. It really turns it into a painted look. It's pretty horrible actually, but uh, on low opacity, um, just over the top of your rendered image, it doesn't look too bad. It, it knocks out some of the detail but adds a lot of color. Um, it's something I really like. You could probably get the same effect from a uh, uh, oil painting um, action. Um, the action the, the action I use is no longer available as I say. I'll try and track it down and maybe see if I can find the author and investigate that for you. Um, once the paint art action is set to the opacity you can handle, 
uh, combine the images using um, Alt, Control, Shift, E. And uh, that's just so that um, Nick Collection filtering has a base image to work with. Uh, so that's the combined layer, basically. Um, the Nick Collection uh, is just a nice package. I'll show you the uh, recipes for the Nick Collection. Color Effects Pro. <coughs> Takes a while to load up. This is a big image, it's 8K. Come on, come on. Are we ready? Excuse me. There we go. Um, Nick Collection comes with like recipes so that you can, there's a lot you can do. Um, the effect library, um, the filters is pretty intense and expansive. Um, you can contrast, uh, detail extract, uh, bleach, uh, all sorts of things. The recipes are uh, recipes which combine one, two, three, four, maybe five of these effects in one go. Um, the recipes I use because it's simpler um, and takes less time than footing away endlessly. Uh, let's see. Recipes. Excuse me. Uh, I have a number of set recipes I've come to on my own, but for the purposes of this, it was uh, Super Punch, which is nice. Uh, uh, S. Super Punch. Super Punch, there we go. Uh, it's a bleach. It's. Yep, we got the right one. Bleach Bypass, um, which. I'm not sure the exact commands inside of Photoshop that uh, achieve these effects. It's just through the Nick Collection. I'm sorry about this, but it's the package I use. Um, contrast. You can see the effect of the contrast. The bleach bypass sharpens up the image and darkens down the dark tones a wee bit, uh, as you can see. Uh, pro contrast. I'll take off both these and show you the pro contrast off and on again. Um, no, nothing amazingly visible. But the combination of these three filters is nice. It's called Super Punch. Um, it, you can get the effect, the same effect by fitting around the camera raw filter, I'm sure. Um, maybe the shadows, are highlights, and blacks. So, oops. I'll cancel that because I've already got the Super Punch in. That's the Super Punch, uh, the effect you can see over the top. Uh, just makes the image but darkened it down slightly, um, but brought up the contrast effectively. So, I suppose that's about. This was the previous image I just used as a comparison to see where I'm going with a new image. Uh, the previous image was a wee bit less saturated and had the the old the older man in it that didn't look very well. So that's out, and the signature, and that's it. Uh, hope this has not been too confusing. Uh, if you've got any questions, I'll hopefully be attending on Sunday, but I'm not sure. I've got various things on the go, unfortunately, at the moment. So um, if you get any questions, I'll try and answer afterwards. And thank you for watching and listening.